these are wild or you know dokos of the elite how do those kids get seen and one of those things is is you know you can't just tony will tell you firsthand is you know he, he would get emails he would get letters he would get everything every day you know it's not enough just to email a coach and say hey would you mind taking a look at this kid and it's so saturated now that what do you guys do do we have any high school coaches here do you guys do anything so for instance you guys do anything in the summer with your teams yeah so you guys run as as a high school necessarily where are you guys from Arapo. Arapo. okay so Arapo, this, this is great so as a Rappo, you guys probably train you know ball as a team summer you guys do stuff with the team but you guys also have kids that play, you know, whether it's 3D, wild, everything. Yeah. Um, so with that, going back to the first thing, how do you keep those kids motivated to want to play spring and summer and everything like that? Um, I think it goes a lot towards actually like the seniors, the, the upperclassmen yep. are huge. Um, a strong senior class is big for, for us at least. That's what last year's issue we have, we have two good senior classes. Um, but we keep it fun. Yep. Like we do different stuff. It's not the same practice schedule every day. It's not the same workouts. It's not the same, you know, just throwing the ball. Mm -hmm. um, we do different stuff all the time. Uh, we try and go to different tournaments. We run different teams. Uh, we run freshmen with, you know, the upperclassmen. Mm -hmm. We run upperclassmen lower trying to teach. So we run them all together. Yeah. No, um, I mean, that's that's awesome. And he hit on some, I mean, he took the words out of my mouth. Is, is Arapo is a little different too because I mean obviously you guys won the state championship and that's kind of always a motivating factor too is you guys are always on the cusp there you know if you know for instance you know maybe a lower level team what is that motivation for a kid to show up in the middle of summer you know with nothing going on or playing for a club team in the middle of summer with nothing going on um but you hit it right on the head is you guys have to make it fun in the fall and the summer okay that's how you could if, if you're out there and you're doing two a days and the kids are out there for five hours in the sun and they're doing line drills for 40 minutes, the kids are gonna get burned out. And that's what I said is kind of this trend you're seeing with Colorado is there's so many kids playing, you know, year round now that you have to be able to do different stuff. Um, you know, one thing how I run my high school practices are I like to keep them a lot shorter, especially in the, in the fall and the summer. But my, my practices are an hour and 20 minutes, but the kids are running the whole time. Not, I don't do sprints, I don't do anything like that, but I'm doing full field drills. Um, anybody here, I was gonna show a drill real quick. Anybody do 3v2 uh, full field? You guys do? Anybody else kind of know that one? Yeah, I mean, it's a good one. So I'm kind of seeing half and half. Um, 3v2 full field, okay? Uh, it's probably my favorite drill to do. A, because the poles are carrying it, okay? The, pole, the poles are shooting, the poles are passing. Okay, attackmen are playing defense, which is which is great for rides. And also the biggest factor, okay, the best reason I love this drill is conditioning. The kids have no idea that they're running way more than they would be with, you know, uh, they would be with sprints or anything that you'd be kind of quote unquote punishing the kids or conditioning the kids is real quick. There's two goals, keep them about, about 40 yards apart. You're gonna start three lines. You're gonna start three lines here, okay? Two guys start on defense, these three guys go. Okay, so these three guys go, they attack the goal. As soon as this guy makes a save, or it's out of bounds or whatever, these three come back, whoever shot it, okay? The rules are if you shoot or turn the ball over, you're out, okay? So like, let's say this guy goes, he turns the ball over, these guys are on offense, these two are now coming back to these three attackers. Okay, as soon as they come, the drill starts. So it starts with three lines down below, okay? Three lines up here. And it's a 3v2 and it's just consistent okay the ball is always the ball is always out everybody's always running okay you don't even have to stop this for about 15 20 minutes so like i said that's probably those are great drills to do in the summer even in the spring a little bit okay obviously springs a lot more x's and o's and obviously if you're a high school coach you're going over scouting reports and different stuff like that um but that's like i said you have to do different stuff like that in the summer okay Steal the bacon, you know, for younger guys, they love that, okay? I see a couple people laughing right now. They they love those type of drills, okay? And especially with these guys playing year-round. There's a lot of drills like steal the bacon and, you know, consistent three-on-twos where these guys are engaged and they're having fun and they're getting better, okay? Um, it's not just partner passing, which all the youth guys have to do, you know? It's different stuff like that to keep these guys engaged and not get burned out. And then back to the, um, the high school kids, the biggest thing as far as the club scene now is I grew up in... I, I grew up in Detroit, moved to Colorado, um, so I was introduced in the Midwest to lacrosse. It was a lot bigger out there than when I came here. 
when I came here, it was Team Colorado. That was it. That was Team Colorado. Was it? You either made it or you did. And you know, uh, luckily, I was I was able to make Team Colorado. But if you didn't make it, I mean, it was not until maybe you know when Gary Gate and kind of Josh Sims started Icon Lacrosse. There was that was the only game in town. Now, like I said, I kind of mentioned a few of them. There's so many different options right now. It's kind of overwhelming, especially if, if you're a father or you know an uncle that's got you know a nephew or a son that that plays lacrosse. It's kind of what do you do? How do you get seen? Um, the kids, you know, the kids like most of you guys, the high school kids, you guys know like the Wilkins and Pete Apples, They're going to be seen regardless. You know, those are not the guys that necessarily need to be traveling. They obviously do, and you know they're successful at it, stuff like that. But it is extremely, extremely rare right now for a kid to only play spring lacrosse and be seen by college coaches. I mean, that's just kind of, you know, Tony will tell you, I mean, you know, how many times did you come to Denver for a recruiting trip in the middle Never. of spring? Never. You know, I mean, and that's kind of the unfortunate, unfortunate <coughs> circumstances, you know, is, is, you know, obviously people were in a digital age where there's a bunch of YouTube videos you can put up and hopefully kind of catch a coach's eye that way. But you really have to, as a high school kid, you have to get out there and, and kind of get seen by college coaches. Um, and it's, it's unfortunately not cheap. I mean, that's one thing. So, you know, you kind of have to gauge as far as if you're a parent or even a high school coach is, is, is it worthwhile for my kid, whether he's a parent or whether it's your son or a high school team, you know, or a high school uh, teammate of yours, um, is it worthwhile for him to go back east? And that's kind of what we're talking about here is, is it is if the kid, A, a the, the club coaches usually are fantastic coaches. Bocklet, you know, runs uh, Douglas County Lacrosse. It's him and Langtree, Downing, um, you know, Shuchuk, you know, all these pro lacrosse players. Not only is it great for, you know, the kids to be around these guys um, because they're great guys, but they're phenomenal coaches, okay? I mean, in Colorado, this didn't exist 10 years ago, that you could be out of practice with, you know, four guys that play for the world team, either outdoors or indoors. Um, so I'm saying that's one benefit of playing club lacrosse. A second is obviously, like we said, is going back east. Not necessarily to get recruited. That's obviously the goal, you know, the ultimate goal. But to play against guys from out east. I can't tell you. I run uh, the Wild Elite team. I can't tell you what it means for our kids after they play, you know, their spring season to go and see the Crabs play or the Long Island Express play. And, you know, just see how lacrosse is played. I mean, not even, you know, for them to – beat them or, or whatnot, but just to even be on the same lacrosse field, as, you know, as them is phenomenal. Um, so one thing I would say is, is encourage kids too. you know, if kids, if kids, you know, work all summer and they can, you know, afford the 800, 900 bucks to get a plane ticket back east, it's, it's phenomenal. Not just to get the opportunity to get recruited by coaches, you know, like Tony Seaman or Petra Mall or any of those D3 coaches even, but just more just for them to see how lacrosse is played. I mean, I know they see the MLL. You know, they see uh, lacrosse on TV, but for them to be taking a face off against a kid going to, you know, a uh, Cornell or, you know, a Hobart or anything like that is phenomenal. So I would encourage everybody to kind of um, look at whether it's, and this is not, this is not saying go to one or another, but just find one that works for you, whether it's just because it's the closest one to you or you like the coaches or, you know, you feel comfortable with the program. I would highly encourage, um, summer you know summer lacrosse you know just to kind of get in the practices get in with great coaches and stuff like that it's a different climate now and it's kind of a scarier climate like tony alluded to is 2016s and you know now 2017s are getting recruited um but that's that's kind of the harsh reality we're in is that's how you get recruited is kind of getting on a team and going back east um 